we were having a tremendous response to add on to metformin with SGLT2. Uh, let me start by introducing myself. I am a diabetologist uh, through and through. And like Sir said, he's compared the analogy of DPP4 with uh, Rahul Dravid. And he's the coach for all the present players. So let's say that DPP4 does act in a you know, sort of a similar manner. And uh, metformin has already established itself as one of the, you know, undisputable first line agents. And there has always been a debate as to what should be the second line agent. So here I am today as the advocate for DPP4 inhibitors. Uh, let me start by saying that all of us are Asian Indians. And whether it is in terms of biological factors, uh, be it beta cell dysfunction, increase in insulin resistance, be it having high ectopic fat or lower metabolic tolerance, we are at a higher risk of having type 2 diabetes at an earlier age in comparison to our Caucasian counterparts. Now, in terms of lifestyle factors also with the urbanization stress, less of physical activity, dietary practices with high carb rich diet, higher postprandial glycemic control, we all are predisposed to postprandial hyperglycemia that leads to a poor time in range, which is the latest modality. The DPP-4 inhibition in type 2 diabetes works with, you know, reduction in appetite, reduction in body weight, increase in the beta cell functioning, suppression of glucagon, suppression of the glucagon uptake and storage, reduction in the glucose production, gluconeogenesis, increased gastric emptying leading to lesser excursion of the postprandial blood glucose, reduction in inflammation, oxidative stress, increase in the vasodilation and cardiac output, and increase in the glucose uptake and the vasodilation. This is all where the DPP-4 action is taking place when we talk about type 2 diabetes. Now, this is our very own Indian paper from 2009 from JAPI that talked about the differential expression of DPP-4 in Indian type 2 diabetic population. So what they did was they hypothetically studied the DPP-4 enzyme response in the Indian population. And what did they find out? They found out that Asians versus the non-Asians, we Asians had a higher, greater HbA1c response in comparison to the non-Asians, which means that when we as Indian type 2 diabetics will be exposed to a DPP-4 inhibition environment, we'll have a better HbA1c control. Uh, the ICMR and IF study is one of the largest papers which is telling us how much of a clinical inertia we have when we want to up titrate our therapy of type 2 diabetes. And is it because SGLT2s are not available or is it because GLP-1 is too highly, you know, uh, expensive? Is it because the sulfonylureas are causing too much of hyperglycemia? Or is it because, you know, we are not able to understand that DPP-4 is a very safer molecule? In an Indian context, whenever we talk about follow-up of to us with the level of glycemic status they come to us with, we are always skeptical in choosing our second line of agent. Is it the SDLT2 which will cause some UTI if the patient is not following a good hygiene? Will the patient be a loss to follow up if the expense, if the molecule is expensive, like in terms of GLP-1 analog? Or will the patient, you know, stop the molecule like sulfonylurea just with one single episode of hypoglycemia? That is where we have to understand that DPP-4 comes as a safer, weight-neutral, cardiac uh, safer molecule for all our patients with type 2 diabetes. So we need a personalized management approach when we are talking about type 2 diabetes. Not one single blanket therapy works for everybody. Do you think SGLT2 is for everybody? It is Dr. Rutul Goklani himself who came out with the paper, why not SGLT2? And he had enumerated a lot of numbers of why not SGLT2. Um, you know, in terms of like life expectancy, in terms of duration of diabetes, frailty, the age of our patients, be it young patient, geriatric, personal preferences, in terms of tolerability as well, we all understand and we all agree to a point that we have to use a molecule that is somehow fitting all of these criteria. So we understand that there are multiple factors that are going to lead to our decision-making process and making the process of, you know, regimen of type 2 diabetes prescription a little complex. So let us simplify and we have to understand what are the essentials for having a good patient outcome. We will have lots of different sorts of patients with various different BMI. 
different comorbidities, different risk of hypoglycemia, the cost, of course, because we are an out of pocket uh, paying country, polypharmacy adherence compliance becoming an issue, and the need for dose adjustments being one of them. Through this uh, slide, through this data of lenagliptin, we understand that DPP-4 inhibition is going to influence all of these uh, glycemic parameters because we want to reduce the glycemic status of our patient coming to us uh, you know, with the primary approach that you have to reduce my sugar. It is going to act on HbA1c. It is going to act on fasting, PPVS, and of course, improve the homobita level. Now, as an add-on to metformin, uh, Lena Clifton has a study <clears throat> that is showing that as an initial combination for Indian type 2 diabetic, it is safe. There is no hypoglycemia when added to metformin and it has an added HbA1c lowering benefit. Now, what about the others? That was for Lena Clifton. In comparison to sulfonylureas, when the systemic review and meta-analysis was done for allagliptin, for saxagliptin, for citagliptin, Wilda, all of these showed that they were safer as well as they were efficacious as an add-on to metformin in a 52-week study. Also, for reduction of postprandial uh, glycemic excursions without hypoglycemia, again, our emphasis remains on hypoglycemia because we talk about the safety of the molecule as well. And we want to see through this hypoglycemia study and appreciate that cetagliptin in comparison to placebo has almost equivalent effect and is safer as well as efficacious. We talk about monitoring, we talk about simple regimens, we talk about step-up therapies, but we also talk about early and intensive, hard-hitting, you know, effect of molecules that are prescribed in as an add-on to metformin. Do our patients do regular glucose monitoring? How many of us have repeatedly asked our patients to come back with an SMBG and have failed to get from them the required SMBG that we have asked to do them? Now, the verified trial is another example of glycemic durability of early combination therapy of a DPP-4 wildagiliptin over here along with metformin versus a sequential metformin monotherapy in newly detected type 2 diabetes mellitus telling us that a DPP-4 is not just efficacious in terms of early combination, it is also going to give us a durable and a consistent HbA1c control over a period of, period of time. What about the CV safety? Dr. Goklani has already established that diabetic patients, type 2 diabetes people, are already equivalent to having macro and microvascular complication and vasculogenic effects. So these DPP-4, be it allagliptin, saxa, ceta, lena, all of these through their various CVOT trials have, you know, given us evidence that they are safe or CV neutral. Ceta, saxa, allagliptin have demonstrated the CV safety. Saxa has see, uh, shown recently come out of the black box and shown its CV neutrality. Cetagliptin, of course, is a heart failure safe molecule. Wildagliptin, through some real world evidences, has demonstrated similar benefits. Now, the pathophysiological defects. When we talk about the defronzos or menis octate, we know that we have to hit all of these pathophysiologies. The DPP-4 inhibitors are targeting five out of these eight pathophysiological defects, uh, you know, decreasing the glucose uptake, decreasing the glucose uptake on the peripheral tissues, decreasing the insulin secretion, improving the beta cell, uh, you know, the humor beta levels, decreasing the incretin effect and increasing the glucagon secretion and affecting the alpha cells as well. Now, how about the geriatric patient? How about the frailty sarcopenia? This uh, review is showing us that DPP-4 are the second line agent after the bioguanides, after the metformin for patients with type 2 diabetes who are frail, who are having sarcopenia and who are elderly. Uh, Rajiv Chawla, sir, and a lot of us who are here on the platform have been a part of these RSSDA therapeutic wheel. And this therapeutic wheel is also supporting that DPP-4 as an add-on to metformin is a suitable molecule across age, across BMI, across different advancing stages of CKD, duration of diabetes, any duration of diabetes, DPP-4 can be used for established CVD for financial reasons as well in lower economic status or even for somebody with a good financial status across different glycemic statuses and is again safer in terms of hypoglycemia. 
The major DPP four dosages for renal impairment stages, again, we have lenagliptin, which is safer throughout all the CKD stages and does not need any dose adjustment for both renal impairment as well as hepatic impairment. We have to understand the relevance of DPP-4 with metformin in patients with diabetes and the therapeutic aspect that it has a overall uh, control of the glycemic pentart, HbA1c, fasting control, PP control, time and range control, as well as good quality of life with lower risk of hypoglycemia, no potential for weight gain, lesser or zero side effects, and lesser requirement for monitoring lesser requirement for counseling needs. So it's it's like you write a DPP-4 once and you can be at least very, very, uh, you know, safer in your mind or uh, let's say niche in, you know, in, in a handy term that the patient, even if he's not going to come back, will not have any sort of, you know, drastic dangerous side effects of hypoglycemia or any other infective, uh, you know, complications. From a patient-centric value, we know that we are going to write this for resolution of multiple defects in this glycemia. It is relevant to our Indian type 2 diabetic patients, like I showed the evidence. Dr. Zuri, said, please conclude. Yes. Um, so my take-home message is that DPP-4 inhibitors are known as a strong HbA1c for fasting as well as PPG. They are one of the safest molecules for fasting as well as feasting and have demonstrated their cardiovascular safety. They require no dose adjustment in renal or hepatic impairment and is also a good choice for elderly patients with type 2 diabetes. With that, I'm going to stop sharing and thank you for your patient listening.